Jump-starting a car is often much more difficult than people realize. Welcome to Mercy J Auto Care, where compassion and craftsmanship come together. I'm Rick Smith, Certified Master Technician. So let's cover a couple of things about jump-starting first. First of all, you're going to have a red and a black cable typically, but don't count on those colors. You're going to look on the battery for a plus and a minus. Pluses are positive, minuses are negative. The second thing you need to understand about a car is the negative also hooks to the engine block, which is metal. Now, batteries have acid in them and those acid vapors come up and they are flammable. And the last connection we make when we're jump starting is going to cause a spark. So we really want to do our best to have that away from a battery. And we especially want it away from the dead battery. So here's what we're going to do. The other problem, actually, it tends to be in the quality of cables. Sometimes cables can look really thick, but they aren't very thick of wire. And a lot of times the clamps don't clamp very tightly, and so they don't make good connections. So we have to keep all of that in mind when we're trying to jump start. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take one end of our battery cables and we're going to take one of the cables and clamp it over rubber on the other one. What that's going to do is that's going to prevent me from accidentally touching these two together. Next, we're going to go to the car with the dead battery. And we're going to hook up to the plus or positive red. And we're going to hook our cable onto that terminal. And we're going to wiggle it and make that connection as tight and clean as possible. If we have a lot of battery corrosion, that's going to make it even worse. Next, if we have some nice metal engine parts available, we'll go to one of those. Or if they're not, we will go ahead and connect to the negative or minus side of the battery. And no matter what, we'll still do the same thing. We'll wiggle that connection and make it really good and tight. Then we'll move over to the good car. Now we'll make sure we don't touch these two together. And we will put this on the positive on the good car and we'll wiggle it, make sure it's nice and tight. And we'll put this on the negative, preferably on an engine block that way or way away from the battery. But if we have to on the battery, we can go ahead and connect that. Now, if you're nervous about it, take a wet rag and lay across the top of the battery. That'll keep the vapors away. So when you make that last connection, it will make a spark. Now, it's a good idea to have the good vehicle running. And if you have some time, just wait about five minutes. What that will do is the good vehicle will help charge the battery on the bad vehicle just a little bit. Then we'll start the car. If it doesn't want to start, we're going to wiggle all those connections. We might move them to different spots, but we need to get the best connection possible. Once the car is started, it doesn't matter which one we take it off of, but we'll take a cable off and we'll do the same thing we did before. We'll put them together so we don't short them out. And then we will disconnect them and we'll be all set to go down the road. So I hope this has been informational for you on how difficult it can be to start a car. And if you have any questions, you're always free to call the shop and I'll definitely talk you through it. So until next time, Safe travels to you and blessings.